Okay, we are going to go over our uh, PowerPoint on energy expenditure. For starters, why do we need to know about uh, measuring energy expenditure or calculating energy expenditure? Well, we might need to know for uh, tra training in dietary uh, regimens for athletes, uh, for training and for exercise prescription for the general population. We also want to understand the metabolic requirements, so the energy requirements for rest and exercise, as well as the effectiveness of exercise training to improve performance or fitness or overall health and body composition. Okay, so uh, the most accurate way to uh, measure this is going to be indirect calorimetry. So this measures oxygen and CO2 expiration. So right, you put on a mask and it measures the oxygen and the CO2 that you breathe out. And since more than 95% of the energy expended from the body is derived from reactions with oxygen, we can very accurately measure the whole body metabolic rate, right? And so that goes up as you exercise, right? We all sort of have learned or know or figure out that we use more oxygen as we exercise. Okay, so that's the most that's the best way to measure it. So let's talk uh, a little bit about something called a MET or a metabolic equivalent. So one metabolic equivalent is the resting energy expenditure for an adult. Okay. So this is also 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight or one calorie per kilogram of body weight per hour. So all those are the same thing. So you can see how much a MET is for one person is different than one MET for another person, right? So if you weigh 100 kilograms, which is 220 pounds, right, then you're gonna consume uh, uh, 100 times 3.5 milliliters of oxygen per hour, right? And you're gonna be at about 100 calories per kilogram per hour for one metabolic rate or one met. If you weigh half that, if you're only 50 kilograms and you are uh, 110 pounds, right? You're 50 kilograms, then you're gonna use uh, 50 times 3.5 milliliters of oxygen or 50 calories per kilogram per hour. And again, that's your resting energy expenditure, okay? So for example, we can use METs and we can use these uh, uh, per kilogram per hour to tell us how much a 68 kilogram woman burns at rest, right? So that's very, very simple. It's just 68, right, times one, right? 68 times one, one calorie per kilogram per hour at rest, 68 kilograms. That's what a woman that weighs about 68 kilograms burns just doing nothing. We're talking about bed rest, maybe sitting on the couch with your feet up doing absolutely nothing, right? So how much does she burn during a day? Well, there's 24 hours in a day, and she's at 68 calories per hour, so 68 times 24. That's a very easy to calculate. Okay, so if she's exercising at 29 milliliters per kilogram per minute, right, then we know 29 milliliters per kilogram per minute divided by 3.5. Well, now she's at 8.3 mets, right? She's at 8.3 mets, that's 29, divided by 3.5 is our given from two pages ago, she's at 8.3 mets, right? So we wanna know uh, she's exercising at 8.3 mets. Now that we know she's exercising at 8.3 mets, we can also figure out how many calories she br she's burning an hour, right? So it's 68, which is her body weight in kilograms, times 8.3, very simple, 68 times 8.3, okay? So you should be able to figure out all sorts of uh, calculations with this. I can give you the number of mets, I can give you the uh, total calories per hour. You should be able to count it back, calculate it backwards. It's uh, not that difficult, okay? There are some other things that we can do. We can also uh, estimate energy from known oxygen cost. So you don't need to memorize these different activities, but you just need to understand them and know how they work, right? So for example, somebody who's 100 kilograms, again, uses twice as much oxygen uh, and therefore twice as much energy as someone who weighs 50 kilograms, right? And that's at rest. It's also when you're moving. So let's say you're walking and you walk a mile, right? So uh, in addition to their, uh, uh, their one met that they use just for existing, just for being alive, when you're horizontally walking, you use 0.1 milliliters per kilogram per minute for each meter per minute, right? So it depends on your speed, speed measured in meters per minute, right? That's the horizontal part. So that's the flat part. Well, then you've also got uh, horizontal running, right? And it's 0.2 milliliters per kilogram per minute for each meter per minute. And again, if you, you can calculate the total amount of oxygen used, 
you can calculate the total number of mets and the total number of calories. Okay. So obviously walking uphill takes more energy, so we must account for that as well. So on the last page we had the horizontal displacement, which is the flat, right? Now we're going to add the vertical displacement, which is up and down, for example, up the hill. So the vertical displacement for walking is 1.8 milliliters per kilogram per minute for each meter per minute, right? So again, it depends on how many meters per minute you're going uphill. And again, you can see it's highly dependent on your body weight. The body weight is very important. Again, somebody who's 220 pounds take tw takes twice as much energy as somebody who is 110 pounds like, to get up the same hill. Okay, so again, we could calculate this. We could use a 68 kilogram woman is walking at 80.4 meters per minute, and she has a vertical displacement of five meters per minute. And you can calculate uh, how much her vertical displacement contributes to her O2 cost, and how many mets that is, and how many calories per hour using our calculations on the previous page. Now, this is about uh, you know uh, junior high algebra. Everybody should be able to do this. Okay, so to calculate total energy expenditure, you add the vertical plus the horizontal. So you add the horizontal plus the vertical, and then you've got to add in the resting because you're still burning those resting calories even when you're moving. These, this horizontal component and the vertical component is added. So that person in this situation would be going 402 calories an hour. Okay, there are some other things that we can use. This is American College of Sports Medicine chart that gives us approximate met ranges for different things. You can see it's not super accurate, but it can still be a useful tool. So, for example, even archery, right? We don't think of that as being very strenuous, but it's still three or four times your metabolic rate, right? Um, bed exercise, right? You think who's going to do exercises in bed? No, it's not, not, not what you might think it is. This is for people who are on a cardiac rehab and can only lay in bed, right? Only people that can lay in bed and just do simple movements with their arms and things like that. Even then, it's one to two mets. So it's still once or twice what their metabolic range is. Better than just laying there and doing nothing, right? Bowling from two to four mets, right? So even bowling, you're going to burn more calories than if you do nothing, right? Sailing, you know, sailing if you're on a... Uh, if you're on the big Oracle uh, America's Cup boat, I guarantee it's more than five Mets. It's very, very, very difficult, right? So we've got all sorts of things here. And again, it just gives you the ranges, okay? We can also measure energy expenditure. We can measure it by measuring workload. So work equals force times distance. An example is a two kilogram of weight that's moved three meters, right? Well, it takes twice as much work to move a four kilogram weight three meters. Or it also takes twice as much work to move a two kilogram weight six meters. So it's force times distance. And we wind up expressing this in joules. And I'm not gonna ask you a whole lot about, uh, about joules, but I just want you to know that that's how uh, work is measured in force times distance. Okay, um, we've got some stuff here about watts. I'm not gonna ask you too much about watts, but you should know that power, right, expressed in watts, watts is work divided by time. So it's also force times distance divided by time. So we go back to the last page. We're moving two kilogram of weight. We move it three meters, right? Well, there's a difference between moving that two, two kilograms of weight really fast versus moving it really slow. Moving it really fast takes more power. So that means it takes more watts, if that makes sense, right? Uh, just like an electrical appliance, right? An electrical appliance that uses a lot of power and higher watts it's going to be doing more work. It's going to be moving things faster or moving heavier things. Okay. Okay, so we can calculate this energy expenditure in watts on an ergometer, such as a rowing machine or a bicycle. And you'll see this sometimes in the gym, and the machine will give you the average in watts. Well, watts are a measure of work divided by time, right? So the harder you work, the more watts you're doing, the more work you're doing in any given amount of time, in one second in one minute, in one hour, right? So if you get on the bike in the gym and you pedal really fast, but you don't put on resistance on, you're not doing much work, right? If you uh, pedal slowly uh, with a lot of resistance on, you might be doing more work than if you pedal fast with no resistance, right? So it's gotta be the work and the time. It's a combination of the work and the time, right? And I'm not gonna ask you to uh, multiply average watts by the number of seconds to get joules. I'm not gonna ask you to do that, right? But just understand, if you're on that gym, you're in that piece of equipment in the gym, and you feel like you're moving very quickly, if you don't have any resistance on there, you're really not doing anything.
okay? I'm not gonna ask you to convert joules to watts. We're not gonna do that, okay? Um, the most, so the most accurate way to calculate energy expenditure is indirect calorimetry. You know the amount of oxygen used, you know how much energy was used. We have standard calculations available for some activities and exercises, and you can measure workload in watts or joules. You can also get an accurate energy expenditure.